begin when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in the interest of transparency, I do just want to say to begin with here that this is not the original speech that I wrote. Um, this is a censored version of the speech. I was told that what I originally wrote was unacceptable. Um, I will be abiding by what I told you today and reading what we reviewed earlier. Um, I have provided my original speech to the Toronto Star and to the National Post for them to do with as they would like. Trustees, board administrators, and HDSB community. Thank you for receiving my delegation this evening. I'm here to share thoughts in response to the professionalism policy that is in development at HDSB. I believe that with such a policy, diverse perspectives are essential, and I stand before you tonight, or in this case, sit, um, to share my perspective as a transgender woman on the importance of such policies in school boards across Ontario. I have many times reviewed policies and procedures that do not adequately facilitate the needs of transgender individuals, and I am hopeful that the enacted policy will be inclusive and fair to all. I believe this is the shared desire of all members of this board. A professionalism policy serves to benefit all staff and students within the HDSB school system. It has been unusual that this board has policies encompassing student professionalism, such as the school dress code, and yet no policy exists for staff and administration. Adults in our schools are the role models for our children, and I would expect staff would present professionalism and decorum that is at least as stringent as that which we enforce upon our students. While I trust that the vast majority of HDSB staff have good judgment as to where appropriate bounds of professionalism lie, it is prudent to have appropriate policies and procedures in place as a precaution. Such precautions protect both staff and students. Transgender women such as myself are especially disadvantaged by poorly written sex-based policies. Historically, professionalism and dress code policies have been used to restrict or impose a particular idea of gender expression upon men and women accordingly. This does not have to be the case, and it is entirely possible to administer a dress code that is inclusive of transgender individuals. Reviewing the existing policy on school dress code for students, this seems like an excellent start for which to base a policy for staff. I am appreciative to HDSB that your school dress code for students takes care to ensure that pupils are empowered to wear attire that they feel expresses their self-identified gender. This certainly is a world away from the dress code that was enforced upon me when I was a student in high school many years ago. It is also akin to the dress code I have, uh, that's been in place at my last three workplaces. Men and women hold physiological differences that require clothing of differing dimensions and proportions. The transitioning individual, regardless of where they reside on their journey, will have some combination of male and female characteristics. And as a result, clothing targeted towards men and or women will fit just fine. So long as the dress code does not explicitly require an individual to present in alignment with their birth sex, there should arise no gender expression issue out of standards of professionalism. Some transgender individuals do use silicone breast forms during the early stages of their transition while awaiting the growth, growth of natural breast tissue. I myself used a pair of 34B forms for a six month period as I awaited growth from hormones. Breast forms are available in a wide variety of configurations. Those which are designed to emulate natural breast dimensions are sometimes used by trans women and also by individuals who have undergone mastectomies, often due to breast cancer. I hope that only these types of breast forms, which are indistinguishable from natural breast tissue when worn with undergarments and clothing, would be acceptable within your professionalism policy. With respect to that policy, I'd like to highlight the importance of diverse perspectives. This is not my first time delegating in front of a board, and the process to make it in front of you today was not transparent nor inclusive. After completing my delegation request per the governance bylaw, I was advised on Monday that in order to be considered, I must provide a full written transcript of my speech, and further, that the contents of this transcript would be the deciding factor in whether or not I had a right to present. This is in contravention of HDSB governance policy M190096. In order to make it in front of you all today, I was required to remove a portion of my speech that was deemed unacceptable by the chair. This is about as far from an open discourse as one can get. I hear the concerns. I hear the concerns from administration about the contentiousness of transgender matters. The tension is not just at HDSB. On Monday, I was a presenter at WRDSB, and I watched as another delegate who's with us today was interrupted by a member of the gallery who decided to yell transphobia over her presentation. This happened three times before the gallery member was finally removed. Democracy is messy, but isn't that the whole point of these meetings? To hear diverse perspectives and find solutions that work for all stakeholders? Yeah. 
to filter delegations based on what the administration wants to hear is antithetical to everything democracy stands for and leaves none of us better off. It will also result in a professionalism policy that is not representative of the needs of the WH, WDSB students and staff. Sorry, I'm not used to saying uh, whatever, whatever this we're, board is. There's too many we're, school boards. We're HDSB. That is the end of my presentation, though. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Julia. Do you mind if I call you Julia? Uh, yes, please do. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Julia, for delegating to us. I just want to uh, come back to the point uh, regarding having to submit your presentation ahead of time. Just due to the sensitive nature, and as I said to you, we, we are trying to ensure that we want to ensure that all the voices of the community are heard. That's what we want. We want to be able to hear your voices. If there are pieces, if there are pieces within that, order please, order please. Thank you. I will have to I'll ask you to leave if you're going to continue to disrupt the meeting. So that is your warning. Next time you'll be out. Just telling you. So thank you very much, Julia. We do really appreciate hearing you. We wanted to hear you, and that was why I asked you to to alter your presentation a little bit. Your original presentation will be shared with all of the trustees as well as the staff at the board, and we really thank you for your perspective. Does anybody? Have have any questions, Trustee Collard? Thank you, through, through you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for this presentation this evening. I appreciate it very much. And my hopes uh, align with yours that our professionalism policy will respect the rights of all to appear um, in the gender of their choice. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Uh, are there any further questions. Trustee or Vice Chair Rosha. Yeah, thank you, Julia, for, for coming tonight and presenting your delegation. Um, I appreciate your honesty, your candor. And um, when I read through your delegation, um, it, it spoke volumes to me. So I, I do appreciate you you sharing it. And having shared it with the Toronto Star, I am A-OK -okay with it because there's nothing in there that um, I think as a board, we want to um, censor, but just because of some proceedings, we had to. But it is available to the public, as Julia mentioned, so you can read it. But I do really appreciate your honesty and candor and uh, uh, having come here to speak tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Julia. I see no further questions. Again, we really do all appreciate hearing from you tonight, so thank you so much for coming and sharing your voice. Thank you. This will come up, just so you're aware, so where this comes up later on in the agenda, uh, the item that you delegated to will come under item 5.4.1 in the director's report. So that's not for a little while, but that was where it will come up in the agenda. So thank you so much. Wonderful.